karaoke books. Moby Dick, or The Whale. Herman Melville. Audiobook. Chapter 77. The Great Heidelberg Tun. Now comes the bailing of the case. But to comprehend it aright, you must know something of the curious internal structure of the thing operated upon. Regarding the sperm whale's head as a solid oblong, you may, on an inclined plane, sideways divide it into two coins, whereof the lower is the bony structure, forming the cranium and jaws, and the upper an unctuous mass wholly free from bones, its broad forward end forming the expanded vertical apparent forehead of the whale. At the middle of the forehead horizontally subdivide this upper coin, and then you have two almost equal parts, which before were naturally divided by an internal wall of a thick tendinous substance. Coin is not a Euclidean term. It belongs to the pure nautical mathematics. I know not that it has been defined before. A coin is a solid which differs from a wedge in having its sharp end formed by the steep inclination of one side, instead of the mutual tapering of both sides. The lower subdivided part, called the junk, is one immense honeycomb of oil, formed by the crossing and recrossing, into 10,000 infiltrated cells, of tough elastic white fibers throughout its whole extent. The upper part, known as the case, may be regarded as the great Heidelberg ton of the sperm whale. And as that famous great tears is mystically carved in front, so the whale's vast plated forehead forms innumerable strange devices for the emblematical adornment of his wondrous ton. Moreover, as that of Heidelberg was always replenished with the most excellent of the wines of the Rhenish valleys, so the ton of the whale contains by far the most precious of all his oily vintages, namely, the highly prized spermaceta, in its absolutely pure, limpid, and odoriferous state. Nor is this precious substance found unalloyed in any other part of the creature. Though in life it remains perfectly fluid, yet, upon exposure to the air, after death, it soon begins to concrete sending forth beautiful crystalline shoots, as when the first thin delicate ice is just forming in water. A large whale's case generally yields about 500 gallons of sperm, though from unavoidable circumstances, considerable of it is spilled, leaks, and dribbles away, or is otherwise irrevocably lost in the ticklish business of securing what you can. I know not with what fine and costly material the Heidelberg ton was coated within, but in superlative richness that coating could not possibly have compared with the silken pearl-colored membrane, like the lining of a fine pelisse, forming the inner surface of the sperm whale's case. It will have been seen that the Heidelberg ton of the sperm whale embraces the entire length of the entire top of the head, and since, as has been elsewhere set forth, the head embraces one-third of the whole length of the creature, then setting that length down at 80 feet for a good-sized whale, you have more than 26 feet for the depth of the ton, when it is lengthwise hoisted up and down against a ship's side. As in decapitating the whale, the operator's instrument is brought close to the spot where an entrance is subsequently forced into the spermaceta magazine, he has, therefore, to be uncommonly heedful lest a careless, untimely stroke should invade the sanctuary and wastingly let out its invaluable contents. It is this decapitated end of the head, also, which is at last elevated out of the water, and retained in that position by the enormous cutting tackles, whose hempen combinations, on one side, make quite a wilderness of ropes in that quarter. Thus much being said, attend now, I pray you, to that marvelous end in this particular instance, almost fatal operation whereby the sperm whale's great Heidelberg ton is tapped. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the channel.